thank the Almighty God for giving us good health. This is New Life Program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. And I'm your presenter, Chileno Diambo. Thank you for staying tuned. In our program today, we have a lot that is in store for you. The one who is going to start us off in today's show is none other than Barry Laseno with an interesting topic known as carrying burdens. Then later on in the program, we are going to have Pastor Lee Kimani with a topic on Tribulation Part 2. Keep it tuned to the Voice of Hope. Oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. I owe that in thine ocean's depths its flow may richer, fuller be. O light that followest all my way, to thee, my heart restores its borrowed ray, that in my sunshine's blaze its day may brighter, Seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall feel. This is the Voice of Hope coming to you from Adventist World Radio. Let us now give way to Sister Barry Laseno to share with us on the topic known as carrying burdens. Be enlightened. Hello, listener. Have you ever tried to explain to your children why, when your burden is heavy, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you. For my burden is light? That text about Christ's burden being light might certainly be confusing, especially to a child. But after you hear what Dr. Kuzma has to say and the story she tells on her brother, you'll have a whole new perspective. My brother, Rich, had a weekly burden. It was his job to mow the lawn. Those were the days before every family had a power mower. The job took time and energy. Time and energy that he would much rather spend playing ball with his buddies. But mom had a rule. No ball until the lawn was mowed. Rich balked. He procrastinated. He pleaded. But nothing would change mom's mind. The burden was his. One beautiful summer day, a friend called Ali. Rich, the young guys are playing baseball on the vacant lot about 10. Can you come and pitch? We need you. I'd love to, said Rich. But it's lawn mowing day, and even if I'd start this minute, I could never be done by 10. And you know my mom, she'd never let me play ball without mowing the lawn first. Then light dawned. But if you'd bring your mower over and help me, I bet we could get it done by 10. A few minutes later, Mike appeared with his mower, and the boys began racing to see who could keep ahead of the other. They laughed and yelled and threw grass at each other and made a game out of lawn mowing. In record time, the lawn was done. The next lawn mowing day, Rich called a couple of his buddies for a lawn mowing party. More fun, and the job was accomplished even faster. Lawn mowing was no longer a burden. Why? Because Rich called in previously untapped resources, and working in cooperation with others lightened the load. Now, what does all this have to do with taking Jesus' yoke upon us when we already have more burdens than we can carry? Just this, a yoke is used 
to distribute the weight of a heavy load so it can be more easily carried. By taking Jesus' yoke, the weight of our heavy burden is shared with him and is much lighter for us. You can help your children understand the truth of Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 to 30 by asking the children to pretend they have to carry five gallons of water. Most kids could hardly pick up the container, let alone carry it for any distance. How could the load be made to feel lighter? One answer is to put the water into two containers and tie the containers on opposite ends of a long pole. Put the pole on your shoulders and the load, although weighing slightly more because of the pole, would be much easier to carry. That's what Jesus does to our problems when we take his yoke. In essence, he says, I've got resources, like my yoke, that will lighten your burden if you just ask me. This is a great answer for all kinds of problems kids have. For example, the term paper that needs to be written, no friends at school, forgetting to feed the dog, what should kids do? Instead of shucking the burden of responsibility and giving up, they can, first, ask Jesus for help, ask for his yoke, his resources, and second, accept the resources, the yoke that he provides, like the friends and their lawn mowers that Rich used to lighten the lawn mowing task. A burden will never be too heavy to carry if kids remember that God has resources that are beyond our wildest imaginations. Let's just ask for his yoke to make our burdens bearable. This script is written by courtesy of Dr. K. Kuzma and I am your presenter, Beryl Asena. Thank you for staying put to Adventist World Radio. I am your presenter, Tileno Diambo. We would like to hear your views, comments, and suggestions concerning this program. Do so by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.com. Dot org. Oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold, for I am coming, Jesus' signal still. Today's New Life program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope, with me, Tileno Diambo. The last time Pastor Lee Kimani talked to us, he shared with us on the topic on triumphant and tribulation. He's here with us once again with the second part series on the same topic. Be blessed. Hello, my friend. I return now with part two of our series, Triumphant Tribulation. In the last series, we found out that God's people are a tribulation people. There's going to be challenges in life because this is the world of sin that we live in. But in spite of that, we concluded by finding that we don't have to worry because God is still on his throne and God is still in control. We read the passage, do not harm, Revelation chapter 7 verse 3, which say, do not harm the sea or the land or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of our servants. This suggests that in addition to being a servant of God, 
that triumph in your life is possible as long as you have been sealed by God. You must be sealed. The seal of God is the sign of ownership. It indicates genuineness. It shows authenticity. It is also a provision of protection. When you have been sealed with the seal of God on your foreheads, it implies that you have a total commitment to God, His will in your life and to the principles of His government. In the ancient times, the seal of God's people was circumcision. But today and in the future, it is not just external. It is not just a form. It is not just verbal profession. Romans chapter 2 verse 28 and 29 says, A man is not a Jew if he is only one outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the spirit, not by the written code. So we must be sealed in our foreheads in our consciousness with the seal of God. I do realize that you are maybe going through tribulation. You see, God's seal is not just for us. It is also for Satan and his demons. It says with this person, you can only go so far but no farther. When you are sealed by God, poverty cannot penetrate that seal. Sadness cannot sour that seal. Clouds cannot darken that seal. Misery cannot mitigate and death cannot destroy because you have been sealed by God. Let me bring you one more point and then I will bid you goodbye. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 says, I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. My friend, if we are going to move from tribulation to triumph, it will be because of the blood of the Lamb. I don't know how you feel about it, but when I get there, it will be because of the blood of the Lamb. When I get to heaven, it will not be because of what I have done. It will not be because of my education. It will be because of the blood of of the Lamb. When you get there to read the title of your mansion in the sky, it will be because of the blood of the Lamb. You see, my friend, you've been purchased, you've been redeemed, and you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. You know, it is strange. The Bible says that they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. How does this work? As far as I have known, blood stains, blood leaves a mark. Blood penetrates, but John says that they made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. And that is how God works. Somehow that which stains is that which cleanses. That which soils is that which saves. That which discolors is that which redeems. I do not know how it works, but I know that there is a fountain that is filled with blood. And I know that when a sinner plunges beneath that flood, they will lose their guilty stain. I know this. What will wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So my friend today, I hope and I pray that you will receive the blood of Jesus upon your life, that as you seek meaning and purpose in your life, it will be that you will encounter Jesus. He will give you power. He will give you strength. He will give you courage. He will give you the power and the ability to conquer the flaws in your life. I want you to believe today that you will accept Jesus in your heart. And when you believe that, your life will be washed and you will start a new life with Jesus. You will walk with him. He will give you victory where you have not had victory before. He will wipe away your tears where your tears have not dried before. He will also give you meaning and purpose in your life. You see, when we get there, it will be because of that blood of Jesus. Some of us will get there through the flood. Some of us will get there through great trial. But all of us will get there through the blood 
of the Lamb. Jesus has opened up his arms because he's inviting you to come and walk with him. He's inviting you to come. He understands you are going through tribulation just now. He understands that you have challenges in your life at this moment. He understands that you you are struggling and you are trying to find meaning in your life. Everything else you have tried is not working. But today, he wants to invite you. He says, come, let me hold your hand. Come, let me walk with you. Come, let me share with you. Come, I will provide for you. Come, I will meet you at your crossroad. Come, I will give you meaning and purpose in your life. Come, I will bring your family together. Come, I will unite you with me. Come, my angels will be with you. Come, because my blood is freely flowing to wash you so that you will become clean and you will be called a child of God. My friend, this is your opportunity. I invite you today to invite Jesus into your heart, to invite Jesus into your life so that you can walk with him and you can share with him. May God bless you, may God strengthen you, and may he keep you until the day he comes for you. May God be with you. We have come to the end of today's edition. If you didn't like it, tell us what to do to improve in the next shows. Write to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at org. From the entire production team, we say thank you and be blessed. I have been your host, Tileno Diambu. Oh, love that will not let me go. I rest my weary soul in Thee. I give Thee back the life I owe, that in Thine ocean's depths its flow may richer,
Trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. At the last trump, for the trumpet.
trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Shall all be changed. In a moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, or the trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, at the last trump, or the trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Soft dews are 